Hello everybody, welcome back. I'm Jimmy and welcome to Jimmy Does Knitting. This is my knitting podcast where I talk about whatever I want. Usually it's a themed episode and we go into a certain topic that's in my knitting world and explore it and I just get to chat about it. It usually relates to projects I'm knitting or projects that I have recently knit. Um, you can find me on Instagram as stereo underscore bait. You can find me at uh, Ravelry is Jimmy Does Knitting and links and information for everything will be below in the show notes. Just click the show more with the, the carrot underneath and it will have um, more information or most information. So today's topic is Holst Yarn, the Super Soft. Uh, I knit a lot with it and I think that it's really good to go over. Um, it's very affordable yarn and we'll get into prices and stuff and then see what happens. Um, just for the record, I'm not paid by Holst. Uh, if they would like to send me something, that would be wonderful. But uh, at the moment, I uh, am just doing this because I know a lot of people have a lot of questions and I think it's a really good affordable yarn. So uh, I think that that's, you know, useful information. Uh, I am not sponsored. I paid with everything for with my own money and I like it. I'm a fan. I'm going to let you know that right now. So just like the review for me, thumbs up. But we'll, we'll go into all the different parts of it. So I have some notes over here. I will be reading because I have actually quite a long list of notes that I want to cover. I have a stack of finished objects and swatches and we can discuss. We'll go over some washing and then we'll look at the yarn itself and see what we have. I have a bunch over here. So Holst yarn is 100% um, wool from Denmark. Where it's exactly sourced, I'm not so sure. On the website, it says it's um, Merino 50% and Shetland 50%. I don't know if it, that's true or not, but like that's what they say. It's a very woolly wool. It's more of a rustic wool. And is a two-ply and a light fingering. So we will start with um, looking at some yarn. This is the iced colorway. I used this in my Aurora Cabin Shawl by uh, Stephen West. And let me see if we can pull this apart a little bit. Um, it is, uh, I don't know if you can see this. It's just a thinner yarn. It's held together by some spinning oil at the moment. So getting it to separate is kind of difficult. So it's, it's a two ply, as you can see here. And it's, I would say, a light fingering. They say fingering, and it's very, like, breakable. So this comes off. You have your two plies here, and then you have the, the other cone. Uh, it says it is 100% wool. 50 grams is 287 meters, or 314 yards. They recommend needle sizes 3 to 3.5 millimeters. I'm not sure what that is in U.S. sizes. It said roughly 25 stitches for four inches or 10 centimeters. And I normally get this online from the whole store, although I have bought it in shops as well. Uh, the store charges some shipping, but it's actually quite affordable yarn. So I think that the shipping isn't really that big of a deal. It comes from Denmark. I live in the Netherlands. It's all right. So it is dyed in the wool, and you can tell that a little bit uh, more in this. It's a, like, basically different wools are put together and carded to make different colors, which is why I think they have such a large color range. If we take a look at this one, this is their cinnamon color that I bought um, for a sweater, and then I thought I was going to use it for something else or not. But you can see here, there are some yellow tones, there's some red tones, and then there's some brown. I think it's the most obvious with this one, but it is also with lighter different colors that uh, it has a little bit of a heather to it. I would say that their tonals and the heather is not really distracting, but there are like little subtle variations. And you can also see it in some of the swatches that I have, but it's not really noticeable as a big thing. It's more of like when you're working with it, it does present as a, a regular color. 
Um, it is a woolen spun, so that means that everything's uh, like carded together for the wool and then it's um, like loosely spun, let's say, so there's more air, so it's super, super light. Not only is it thin, but it's light and it has a little bit more grip and texture, which makes it great for things like color work and it makes it great for um, just like it's a really light fingering weight yarn. So if you need like a lighter garment that's more affordable or if you want some affordable color work, I would highly recommend this yarn for this. So there is a difference, I would also say, in terms of the more saturated colors versus uh, the non-saturated colors. And what I mean by that is like the thickness of the yarn. I don't have any black here with me, but it either comes in a 50 gram ball, something like this, or it comes in a 500 gram cone. So you can either buy one or the other. This on the website now I think is like 30 euros. And then this was, I just ordered some, I think it was like 380 euros. So that plus shipping, which is fairly affordable unless you have to do a bunch of shipping, I guess, but it comes just regular mail. It's not like fast or anything, but the whole part of this is that it's like fairly economical, really good wool for the price. So you have the two. This is not 500 grams because I have used this for two sweaters, including this one that I'm wearing. And then this is pretty much a 50 gram ball right here. So that's how much you get. This is maybe 300, half 250 of what it gets. I, I don't have a fuller cone than this, but this is the, the explanation. When you knit like a lighter color, let's see if we can have a little bit of a comparison. Um, but you notice that the, the strands of the the lighter color are slightly thicker than the ones of the darker colors. So that's just something to be aware of. I would say in terms of how the finish comes and how it blocks out and everything, it's quite like negligible, but it will change gauge slightly. So especially with something like this, where I use their darkest color, um, either black or ink, depending on what it is, because I have two two cones that I use. It was a little bit thinner, and I think that's because the dye just saturates it and like felts it slightly a little bit more, where this acru color is a little bit more, I mean, it's natural, it's not really dyed. And so it's like the, the light unspun, I mean, spun, but like the light untreated fibers for the most part. And that's where it makes a little bit of a difference. Uh, the darker colors do have a little bit more of a rougher feeling because of this than the lighter colors, but I would say in general they're roughly the same. There's not like a big difference to, to flag with that. Um, the colors do bleed as well, and especially when you have um, a lot, there's spinning oil in this. So the thing that gets Host Super Soft really inexpensive is the fact that it's not processed as much as other stuff. So especially if you get it on a big cone or the other balls, um, there's not that washing step that happens in the factory which allows them to eliminate a process and therefore eliminate a step and cost and all of this stuff. So when you knit with it, it feels a little like waxy and it smells kind of sheepy because it has the spinning oil which is lanolin or sheep oil in with it and it can be rough on a hand feel. I'm not going to say that it feels nice um, when you're doing it. It's not like some of these super wash or you know really like fancy yarns. It has a bit of grip to it and I knit continental with my left finger and if I'm really going for it for a day I have a stripe on my, my finger Sometimes it stains, sometimes it doesn't. So that's something if you have really sensitive hands to keep in mind. In terms of washing, the color and the lanolin do come out. So the water gets a bit murky, especially when you go with darker colors or larger garments. They uh, tend to have a little bit more like residue. It's like, not like the water's clean and you need to go and wash it a couple of times. 
what I have done is I have done some swatches for you and then we will go through washing them. Currently in my stash, I have these colors here and I have like barely a cone of some of the ink left. Um, so we're not gonna show it to you, but we have a couple of colors here. We have um, a crew. We have Princess, which is a really pretty purple, and I've ordered some more of this because I just think it's like a fun color to swatch with, and I think it's pretty and it can go with some mohair, and I can do some, I can just play with it, which is what I really want to do. I have this iced color here, which is just leftovers from a shawl that I've made. We have Lark. I want to say it's like a tealish bluish you can see it a little bit more on um an upcoming project that i have i have this oat color which is really nice it's pretty simple and neutral i would say that in some pictures and in some podcasts this seems a little bit darker i don't know if it's really showing up too too much darker here we have the what is this? The cinnamon that I showed earlier, which has a little bit more heather to it, but it's a nice brown. We have clover, which I think is a nice dark green, like a forest green. And then I have one more, which is uh, this poppy, which is sort of like an orangey red that I used a lot of. I really like it. Um, I will say that these colors do tend to be a little different on the website, like how they look than in person, but not tremendously. But I think that in general is something that you need to be aware of when you're purchasing yarn online is like the color, true color versus the not true color. So Let's get into the washing of these and I will be right back with you. All right, so we are going to block the swatch. How I normally do it is I use warm to hot water if I'm just doing a single color. If I'm doing multiple colors where there's bleeding, always, always cold, and then also adding some vinegar. But we're going to block our swatch here it's just knit on 3.5 millimeter needles um, it's a stockinette swatch uh, this is the color poppy and this is what we're using for our comparison it, it's fine it's great so let's turn on the water and we'll add some soap um, because this is so oily i really like to use dish soap in the beginning you can use your euclid you can use whatever you want um, but you want it to be fairly soapy and you just soak it in the water for a little bit um, and then we'll come back to this. So what I want to do with this is just show you how much of the spinning oil comes off as well as some of the color which you may or may not be able to see. Alternatively, this is um, Aleppo soap over here. It's an oil-based soap. Any sort of oil-based soap will work. And it's always good to use that sort of like as a, like a little bit of a towel <laughs> to like rub it on so you can really get in there. It really helps um, break down that spinning oil and helps make things soft. So um, we got some bubbles. We're having this sit here for a while. We'll come back in about 15 minutes and we will check on our swatch. All right, it's been about 15 minutes. We went, we had a snack. This is looking much better. So I uh, didn't actually lose a lot of color. Sometimes they do. It has a little bit of a pink. I don't know if you can see it, but it's really soapy and you can tell that it's really bloomed so far, which is really good. That means a lot of the spinning oils have been washed out. So we are going to drain this really quick and then we're gonna do wash number two. Now with wash number two, often I'll do like a eucalyn or something nicer, but because this is just a swatch, I don't really mind that it's just dishwashing detergent. 
So once again, all nice and soapy. Um, I also don't mind like agitating the holst a little bit. I mean, it, yeah, I mean, you're not supposed to because it felt slightly, but I think with a lot of these type of products, it does. And it also, um, you know, these things expand so much that it, that it uh, helps a little bit. But I mean, that's a preference, not a, not a must. So we'll have this soak for about another 15 minutes and then we'll come back. All right, it's been about 15 minutes. We've had this soaking again. Um, I'm actually really impressed with how much the color stayed on this. Usually there's a bit of runoff, but um, we have it and it feels nice and soft now. You can tell the spinning oil is out. So what I like to do is just rinse it out because you can tell there's still some bubbles and stuff in there. Um, I'm not so gentle with my knits. Other people are. Um, this yarn is pretty tough. It's not like very delicate or anything like that. So we just rinse it off. Um, if I have euclid, maybe I'll let it like sit a little bit in the rinse, but otherwise um, just give it a good wash so all of the soap is out. Now if you do it a couple of times, it will really help with the um, the amount of the spinning oil getting out so it will become softer. One thing about Holst is the more you wash it, the more you wear it, the softer it becomes. So here is our block swatch. I'm going to put this out to dry and then we will show you the difference between the blocked and the unblocked and the measurements of it. I have done two swatches for you. This one is unblocked and this one is the blocked one that we have just seen. These are the poppy color knit in th three millimeter needles. And I want you to get a really close look because it really changes once you block everything and once you wash everything, <clears throat> how they look. And once again, I would say you have to wash it a couple of times. Um, one to just get like the spinning oil out and then one to just like wash it a little bit. But here it is. I don't know if you can see this, but it looks like a little waxy and maybe you can see my hand behind it. It is a little bit more see-through. And I would say three millimeters is the like tighter end of how this would be knit. I think it's fine up to like a 3.75-ish. Uh, but we have this is how it looks. And then after blocking and drying, it looks like this, which I'm not sure how this is capturing, but this is to me a completely different fabric. This is super, super nice. I love the density of it knit on a tighter gauge. You can probably see like a little bit of heathering. There's a little bit more pink, a little bit more um, yellow in on this one, but it really fluffs up. And if you wash it a couple of times and you wash it with some good soap, it's so much softer. It is to me next to skin soft, but I know people don't necessarily feel that. It is not a merino wool for sure. It's not super, um, like cushy and like soft. So if you do have wool sensitivities, I can understand where some of the like rusticness of this yarn and the little fibers would create a little bit of itch. I do not have any problems with this. But just as a comparison, look at these two swatches. This is the washed one. This is the unwashed one. And hopefully, oops, let me turn this around so they're facing the same direction. Hopefully you can see a little bit of a difference in how this knits up or even just how the cords are. Like this one over here is super thin and like not so much and this really plumped up. And I think that that's really a good indicator of how it is. And it's really, I think it's soft and I think it's nice. I wouldn't say it's super soft. I'm not sure the name is super correct, but it is a good quality yarn for sure. Um, oh, what I wanted to say in terms of rows and how this knits up. When between washed and unwashed, even on this size swatch, the stitch gauge usually changes by like one. So for me, like when I go up 2.25 millimeters of a needle, it goes up like one stitch per four inches. 
And then um, when I wash it, it goes up one stitch per inch. So I think that it really makes it, it expands it like a little bit, but not a lot. It's fairly stable in that way. When you measure the swatches, actually the, um, the row gauge is pretty much the same. What I will say though is in a garment, it does tend to grow slightly. So like, for example, when I knit these sleeves originally, they were like here on me and then after blocking and I stretched it a little bit, but it grew quite a little bit, uh, like a lot so that we could get the right um, sleeve length. Of course, my elbow is bent, so it's not quite wrist length right now, but um, it does grow on a body and in a garment when you wear that. So that's something to be aware of that your swatch may, may buy about. So um, knit the sleeves a little bit shorter so you get them to the right size if you're doing that. And those are the general like highlights of the yarn. Uh, once again, it's super affordable. It comes in a great range of colors. You can just order more. Everything's super um, consistent with everything. And then you can just knit it into something. Uh, I did a couple of experiments with this because I knew that I didn't want to spend a bunch of money with a lot of different things. So I thought Holst was a good alternative. And then I actually ended up really liking it. Um, and then I also think that it's great with color work. It's like a go-to accessible color work yarn that's not super, super expensive. So let's go on to some other swatches for garments that we're going to see. Uh, here is Holst knit up for my nightbook sweater, which we will show you. It's on two very different needle sizes. I think that this is like a 3.25 and this is like a 4.5 maybe even. Um, my This is my first color work swatch, so I think that it really changes um, based on size, but like even in, you know, a very much like a tighter gauge, it looks really nice, but with like a looser needle, it also looks really nice, I think. It really fills in and it doesn't look that way when you're knitting, when you're knitting, especially color work, it looks a little bit like, I mean, color work doesn't look great until you block it, but then this with the spinning oil makes it look a little transparent and like, well, how is this gonna turn out? But I assure you, especially based on these swatches, that it turns out very nice. I also did some swatches for this sweater. This is the Flatten Genser by Bricker Berica. I did make some modifications to this. This is a top, no, this is a bottom up raglan knit in the round. The lighter color is actually supposed to be the, um, like the background. And then the background color is supposed to be a natural white according to this. So what I did is I modified everything so that the neck, the hem, and then the cuffs are all a black background because that's more of the dominant color that I wanted because I mostly wear black. And I thought it would look nicer with these white snowflakes as opposed to um, just like a, the opposite, I guess. I just wanted a darker garment. And in part of doing that, I changed this pattern up slightly for these raglans. And it's also down the side. Um, it's actually a really beautiful pattern. I don't know if you can see that with like a little um, stitch motif, just a single one, but it was supposed to be like white, black, alternating white and black, black and then white, but I wanted it to be once again more black. So I made it all black. And those are the modifications that I made it. I also made some modifications and I added length to the body, which added length to the sleeves, which was much needed. And then I also added length into the yoke with this by just knitting a couple of rounds extra before I started the decreases. Um, this is a really nice sweater. The one thing I will say about Holst in general is that knit on its own is a little flimsy, like this collar is quite flimsy. And what I like to do in general anyway is bind off at the collar and then knit the collar just in case it needs to be re-knit or something. It adds a lot more structure. So the chance of the collar stretching out or the piece stretching out um, reduces and having the seam in it really helps. So 
the collar can come in and out. I can make it folded, over double, I could make it whatever. Um, but it is really good. Uh, this is a very light sweater because of the yarn. Even though it's double, I would put this more as a transitional sweater in between like spring and fall, maybe like towards the colder months. It would be when it works the best. If you need something like super, super warm, this is, I don't know, to me, not super warm. It looks like cozy winter, but I'm always really cold. So I would like a worsted weight cable sweater. So it's just like layer upon layer, but it, it's really good um, in general. So like for a all over color work sweater, I feel like this is pretty light. And then once these patterns bloomed, I thought it was really like beautiful. And you can see that in the swatches. So these are two different needle gauges both smaller than the one that I went to. But let's start with this one. Um, it just has like a really nice texture. This is the iced and then the lark, I wanna say, uh, that I just um, had in my stash. What I like doing is I like swatching with stuff that I have extra in order to do these sort of things. So that way I use up the yarn. Like I said, the difference in the colors really isn't that big of a deal. And uh, if I want to swatch or if I want to play with things, then I just grab some and I can like go to town. It's super affordable. It's great for swatching. It really shows you how to, it, things bloom. And then you can really like then customize your colors. Uh, here's another swatch for this sweater. I think that this was maybe a bigger needle. I'm not really quite sure which one was bigger. But uh, yeah, it was just to get the idea of how to make this. What I will say is that my gauge is always off when I swatch. So these actually were supposed to be about the same size as this, but as you might be able to tell what I ended up, oops, what I ended up with is uh, actually quite a lot bigger. And I think that that's just because I'm knitting a larger circumference in the round as opposed to a smaller one like this. But it's really great for like playing around and swatching I think it's a great idea. What this project was, the Fleck and Cancer, not only is it beautiful and I wanted to make it, but it was also a stash buster. Oh well, stash buster. I think that for me, it's important to have like a cone of white and a cone of black fingering weight on hand at all times, just in case. And this went through and used a lot of yarn. I actually finished up one of my my black yarn cone and I use like part of my ink. So if you look closely and in certain lights, at one point on the sleeves and in the, the body, it transitioned and technically this color and this color are two different ones, um, but everything on the bottom is the black and then everything you know on the top is the ink. Uh, but you really can't tell because it transitions within the color work and it also, just, I mean, it looks the same. The ink is slightly bluer, the black is slightly blacker. Uh, it's negligible and only a, a trained eye would really see the difference. But that's enough of that. This is my flat and Genser, and this is 100% all super soft. Um, it's a really nice garment. It fits so well. The arm was great to work with and it really puffed up and made this beautiful color work and you can see it. Uh, let's go on to other ones. Uh, now oh, here's a good example. I have a ton of swatches here. This is something like an idea that I was playing with. And this is, I don't know how I feel about it, but you can see here, like cables are really flat in this. And this is because of how the yarn is. It doesn't really have a high twist. It's not like a plumpy yarn that's going to have lots of plies and stuff. It just flattens out well, which is what makes the color work so beautiful. But on the other hand, it makes things like cables uh, a little bit on the flatter side, which if that's what you want to go with, that's how I'd say that's, that's all right to go with. Um, now to what I have made with Whole Super Soft and my thoughts on it. So the first one is this vest. This is a self-designed vest that I did. Uh, my boyfriend picked it out. What I did is I did the cuffs, collar, and hem with just one strand of whole super soft. I held the it double with like a drops 
Kids Silk in the color black. And I think I used my black cone for this. And so that's what the combination is for the... I used the Kids Silk Haze in the color Violet by Rowan Yarns. That's what I did. And that's what this purple is. The only issue really with this, I think that the the fabric held with the um, mohair is really nice. It's fluffy, it's warm, it feels like soft and luxurious for a really affordable price. Because if you think that this used less than half a cone of yarn, so let's say like 15 euros plus like two or three kid silk um, balls that were on sale, I probably spent less than 30 euros on this. Um, in terms of the holes, the kids saw the Roman was a little bit different. The one thing that I will have to say about this is, like I said before, the collar and the cuffs are not so solid with this yarn. They're a little bit more floppy than uh, other fingering weight yarns. And so the, that's why the idea of the um, just knitting it separately, binding off and knitting it really works with this. Just in case you need to substitute it, that was the one comment from my boyfriend was that he wanted these to be a little bit more solid and I said don't worry about it. If they get stained or something we'll rip it out and, or we can just buy a different type of yarn and, and do that with it. And I'm currently using the same yarn combination of the drops with a the cone of, of yarn to make a Redford sweater by Julie Hoover. And this is unblocked, where it is, this is blocked. And you can see a bit of a difference in texture, at least I can from the light sh shining through here. This is definitely more full, um, but it was great because they didn't have to gauge swatch for this. I just made, measured this to figure out what I did with this which was the same as the first version of that I made. I'm really looking forward to it because I just wanted a basic, basic black sweater, black mohair sweater for this winter. And I think this will be really good. It's super affordable. It was meant to be stash busting, but I ran out of yarn. So I ended up over ordering again because that's what I do. I panic buy and then they over order, which is why I have so much stash of everything because it's all just over ordered. I really just like buy some yarn to have some yarn. So this is the drops, uh, the mohair with the um, super soft, and I highly recommend it. He wears this without a shirt underneath. It's next to skin soft. It's really great. And I'm looking forward to this sweater once I get another shipment done. I also did a couple of scarves with this. When I wanted to play around with this, I made this. So this is the Brett scarf. It's super long. It's by Rassisu. Um, it's origami knitting is what it's called. And as you can see, it has this texture on it that is um, really quite nice. I will say that like the cables, this was not the appropriate yarn to use this. This was really me testing it out. And I didn't know at the time that I absolutely had to wash Holst yarn. And at the end of this pattern, it says, do not wash. So what the deal with that is, is the washing for it um, flattens the origami knitting. And it's beautiful and you can see it, but it's really like, it doesn't make the, uh, the pattern come out as much. Like, look at this. I mean, it's, it's a nice scarf and I made it super long. Um, and it was an enjoyable knit, but I just was not the right yarn for it. So you don't really like get the effect that you really wanted to with this. And that was entirely yarn choice. And that was me not reading the pattern and also me not knowing about holes because you have to wash this um, in order for it to become super soft or even like pleasant to wear, you need to wash it. That being said, I wore this almost all winter I like it with something on my neck in the office. I like it when it's cold to have something on my neck. And so I have this scarf that I've worn a ton. This is in the, I did this on a 3.25 millimeter needle. So this is a little bit like 
broader than the, the swatch that you've seen, but as you can see, it still fills out quite nicely um, on just not a three millimeter needle. But if we want to look at a three millimeter needle, this is another cowl that I wore. I designed this based off of an, a cowl that I had from a fast fashion brand. It's just a garter rib, essentially. It's two rows knits, two rows pearls. I should write this pattern down and give it for free because I don't know if that I can sell it. It's just a cowl that's roughly 24 inches wide and 48 inches long. Is that right? Something like that. Uh, cast on 100 stitches and just went for it. And then I kitchener at the end. This is another piece that I wore all winter because it just, I mean, it doesn't look the best, but it's super, super warm and I liked it. And it just like, it kept me comfortable and it was based off of a, a scarf that I knew that I liked and that I wore all winter before. Um, the other one was gray. My wardrobe's not gray anymore, it's black. So that's why that one had to go. And I was like, well, I'll just knit one it's pretty affordable. It took forever because it's three, three millimeter needles and it was knit, knitting for like almost as tall as I am. So uh, it was a labor of love, but I'm very happy I did it. And as you can see, the more you wear it and the like more you wash it, which this needs a wash because it's the end of the season, the softer it is. And I can put this on a very sensitive part of my body, my neck, and I can feel fine with it all day. Um, so yeah, if you have the holst and you're a little bit hesitant with it, make sure you wash it really well and then you can wear it. And then it grows a little tiny bit, and but it gets like softer and softer and softer. With this sweater, I actually like, for lack of a better term, washed the shit out of it. I did three rounds of wash. Um, this one I just did one with like a little bit of eucalyn, so it's not quite as soft. But when you really like go for it and soak it and you don't have to agitate it or anything, it becomes really nice. And the more you wear it, the more it settles and the more you just feel comfortable in it. So uh, that was another one. I think this is in ink, technically. And then I've also done this sweater. So this is the Nightbook by Unwind Knitwear, Rachel Easley. And this was my first color work project. And the reason why I chose Holst for this is one, it's a color combination that I knew that I would never wear. If anybody wants this, let me know. I, I will like practically give it to you. I just wanted to tend it up. And I knew that I didn't want to invest a ton of money into it. And so that's why Holst was great. Not only is it good for color work, but it was also, I think I spent less than 40 euros on that and then I bought the yellow. I couldn't find the yellow that I wanted in Hulse. So this is Bicycle by Bicycle by Westwool um, of Stephen West of Stephen and Penelope. But if we look going down, it's beautiful. It has wonderful color definition. You can probably see some of the heathering in here. Maybe, maybe not. And um, once again, like a thinner, like it's a thinner hem here. And then this is a little bit thicker because I used a different wool for this. So this is what I was saying. This is also a folded over collar, so it's a little bit different, but um, yeah, it's a little bit thin on the cuffs and collars, but the color work knit up beautifully and it was fun to do. And I think it was really a good one. And the more that I wear this also, I've only worn it a couple times because I'm not a big color guy. Uh, but it's softening up and it's really nice. Uh, another one that I knit out of this, and this is why I bought my big A crew comb, is because I wanted to make this. This is my ugly Christmas sweater. Um, it is a top down, it's a festive yoke pullover by Skein Deer Knits. It's basically like a choose your own choose your own pattern with the Christmas theme. She has different motifs and then gives you sort of like a recipe and then you can substitute in what you want. Uh, it's meant to be all over, but I just wanted it to be the, the yoke with the color work. And then I did some trim. See these reindeer, how fun. Um, on the bottom. And then I also, I modified this one a lot. So I made the 
the cuffs and the hem super, super long. And I did them in this obnoxious poppy red. I put like a little motif right above. I was gonna do like maybe some snowflakes with some pearl bumps, but then I saw that cinnamon in my stash and I was like, I have to use this and it has to be a reindeer. So I did. And I realized that I needed to do it on both. And then I also made this into a turtleneck because I kind of didn't want this to be an ugly Christmas sweater. And I always think that like an ugly Christmas sweater is better with a turtleneck. So I made a, a giant turtleneck in two by two rib. It turned out pretty well, I thought. Um, but I'm really proud of this. I think it looks really nice. And I wore this every chance I could get during Christmas. I will say this does, it did smell and it does smell kind of sheepy. It's just one of those things. I smell it more with the undyed yarn more so than the dyed yarn or the ones that have more dye in it rather. So this one I was like trying on and I was like, oof, we're at the farm. But I think it looks really good. And um, yeah, there's some snowflakes and some Christmas trees and some snowmen and some reindeer. And it really made me happy. Like it's, it's it was a good knit. And yeah, I really like this one. I did knit this. The fabric is actually on a 3.75 millimeter. I would say that this is probably not the most appropriate yarn for this. It really needs a sport weight for this pattern, um, but I made it work with the holst. And part of the reason why I wanted to do the holst is because I knew that I would wear this two or three times a year, maybe, and that I wanted something affordable to do it with. So this whole thing cost me, I mean, with the purchase of the cone, maybe like 40 euros, something like that. And I way over ordered um, on the green and the red. So it was really like affordable. I think the product was really nice. I was very excited about this and I got to wear it. So the, this is a perfect example of like what Holst is great for is some color work, um, that you need it to be affordable, but you still want some good quality yarn and that you can wear it year after year after year. And that's, um, that's this. And it makes me happy. I have this in a special drawer and I can't really wear it any other time of the year. But uh, yeah, I forgot about this one. It's really nice. And then I have one last example and it is Holst mixed with um, Rowan felted tweed. So I had this felted tweed and I was like, I'm gonna get this DK weight sweater out of it. I did, it fit terribly. It was awful. Um, I don't even wanna say anything because of like the designer and stuff. I don't think it was the designer's problem. Maybe, maybe not. Like the collar was very square. Something was up with it. It didn't fit me. I tried to block it into different things. It didn't work. So I unwound it and I got inspired by Sam of Irish Farm Arts to make a Gansey. And I got some traditional Gansey books and those use a worsted weight yarn. So between the yarn that I was using being tortured before and using like historically a larger weight yarn, I decided to pair this like sport weight with this, um, it was, I don't know, one of my Holst black cones and it became a worsted weight. And I designed my own Gansey based on historical things in the Netherlands, just different villages. I wanted something easier, but this is what we got out of it. And it is beautiful. It was my favorite sweater. It's not quite anymore. The Savin has, has made that better, but like, this is really one of my favorite sweaters. It's just like a simple, basic texture. I did it from the bottom or up in the round and then I knit the sleeves top down and it's so nice. I think this is really fantastic. I want another crack at it in terms of pattern making, but like this is like like one of the like the the best knits that I, I could imagine of. And it was because I held the felted tweed with the holster. Now it did grow a little bit when I blocked it which is fine, um, but I mean, that's one thing that was expected. One, because the yarn was a little bit gnarled and it actually got to relax because I didn't like re-block the yarn before I used it. And then with the whole, um, it grew a little bit, but it also made it a little bit darker and I think it added a lot of um, structure to it that otherwise would have not been there because it's like a, it's a real workhorse yarn. 
What I do want to point out here is the, the cabling on this. And maybe you can see it, maybe not. I'll put it a little closer. Uh, the cabling's really flat, and that's just the type of yarn that I used. So see if you can take a look at the, the pattern here. But I just used a two by two cable, I think it was like once every six rounds or something. But like I said, the holster is great for color work. It's not so great for these like popping cables and stuff like that. And they become quite like flat and almost like a texture rather than like a, you know, like a cable, 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 um, which is fine. And I knew that was going to happen because of the yarn that I chose. And I was totally cool with that. I was not looking to do an all over cabled sweater. I just wanted something that was like easy and fun and texture and that had some historic connection to where I'm living right now. And I thought it was really nice actually. So uh, this is my last whole super soft adventure. Not the last chronologically, but the last one that I have to show you. And that is my general thoughts on Holst Super Soft. So would I recommend it? Yes. Um, I think you need to watch the spinning oil. And if you're really sensitive to touch, um, maybe wash it out beforehand or make sure you wash the garment really well. That's like the biggest complaint that I've heard is like people like not wanting to knit with it because they're used to like luxurious yarns and this is not a luxurious yarn it's more of a work colors yarn but i think it does certain things um very well and very affordably and it comes in a wide range of colors and i encourage more people to use it i know that they're all scared because they heard it was hard and like all this other stuff it's not and you just have to be patient and you can get some really really beautiful things out of it and what else? I think that's it for the Holster Review. A, I'm going to catch you in two more weeks. We have some summer top updates to go on. We have some more color that we're working with. And we have some plans. So I will talk to you then. And in the meantime, if you have any more questions about Holst, put them in the comments. I will be happy to answer them or even do like a follow-up video. But I hope this gave some information and some help and that more of you guys go out there and buy some because I really enjoy it. And I think that if you're scared, just go and do it. I think it's great. And the worst comes to worst is you just spent a little bit of money on some yarn to experiment, which is what I think people should be doing a little bit more anyway, is learning and growing and trying different things. And if it's not for you, that's fine. Um, but I think it's for a lot more of you than maybe you think. Anyway, I'll talk to you later. Um...